What's going on, guys? So first and foremost, before we get started, I'm going to be giving you five tips on how to be faster in Gran Turismo. Now, these are going to be good tips. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I've made, you know, guide videos in the past, like two, three years ago. I've made uh, basic tutorials on how to get faster. But since then, a lot has changed since I've made those guides. You know, when I competed in FIA, I've really, I've really learned a lot. And uh, since I've just been returning and you guys have been giving me an amazing warm welcome, I, I thank all the new subs that have been coming along, all you original guys that have been subbed to me for the past you know, year or two, I really appreciate all of you. And, and the recent amount of uh, you know, the likes I've gotten and the views I've gotten on some of my videos, it's given me a little bit more energy again to want to come back and help and give advice. And uh, you, you know, I really have been loving it again. I have like that new energy. But with that being said, I wanted to go over five quick tips to make you guys faster. Those coaching sessions that I've been doing for all the different driving levels, levels, I will continue to do that. This is just something a little bit extra that's gonna be general for all driver levels. So it doesn't matter what you are, even if you're an A plus driver or A or even a D driver, you will benefit from these tips. So the reason why we're sitting in this view is because this is going to be an example, okay? Uh, this was for my last stream. I just saw this as being a really good example for one of my tips, and we're going to start from here. So number one, learning competitor cars breaking point. So I know that sounds strange, but this is very, very important. You need to be aware of where your competitor can break with his car. If you are not aware of the matchup, and you were trying to become faster, you're trying to get to that top tier split, and you are unaware of you know, where a GTR can break opposed to where a Subaru is going to break, that's a huge problem. Because if you're unaware of the matchup, you're not going to be able to take advantage of any mistakes, and you're not going to really know where to overtake. You're going to end up playing follow the leader. Okay, This example right here between the 86 and the Lexus is a really good example of what I mean understanding breaking points okay so watch this now i want you to pay attention now you'll know that the you should know the lexus is faster on a straight than the 86 is but the 86 can out break the lexus so you are about to see a move from the outside due to out breaking the lexus and this is important because if you are playing and you just think to yourself, well, group four, I always break at, you know, 50 meters and you take all of your group four cars and you always break at 50 meters or you don't really adjust it per car. That's a problem. You need to be thinking in your head, oh, okay, cool. Uh, this guy's in, like I said, a GTR or whatever. He's in a Lexus. I can now break him maybe by like seven or eight meters and kind of get that little bit more of a cut and have the, the edge on the outside. And that's about, that's what you're going to see right now. Watch this. Boom. Do you see that? Do you see how late that break was? The Lexus, he broke on time. That's actually Eric GTR 3123, uh, 3123 right there. He broke where he needed to break, but that 86 can get away with breaking a little bit later, giving him that opportunity to take this pass on the outside. That's why this is so important. If you didn't know that, and we went back on this, and you had no idea that you could outbreak this Lexus, you just would have been side by side, he would have had the inside line, and you would have never been able to gain a position. So you see this again? Look at that, he's not breaking till about right there. So he has all this edge, and not only is he breaking, he's breaking and lifting and breaking. So doing kind of a, an in-between tra trail break on this turn here, listen. Boom, you see that? And he gets all that speed. So that's number one, you need to practice that. You need to know what your car matchup is. All right, number two, trail braking. Another extremely important lesson to learn. You have to know how to trail brake. If you wanna be up there in top split, if you wanna be up there to that A, A plus range, you need to know what trail braking is and you need to know how to perform it effectively. This is going to be an example of a trail break of what I'm trying to say, but you need to master this. And the reason why is because you're going to be able to maintain such a higher amount of speed going through certain corners. If you don't trail break, if you're just lifting and you're coasting through, you're going to be going a little bit too slow. 
The idea behind trail braking is that you're gonna be able to maintain a high amount of speed and you can control how much the car is going to oversteer or understeer rather by giving it a little bit of a break to keep it from going too wide. Now watch this, okay? Watch the break. You guys are familiar where the break is. It's gonna be the red on the left-hand side. Watch what he's going to do here. He's going to take this turn. He's gonna be braking and giving it a little bit of gas at the same time. Now you don't have to give the car gas. Just focus on the braking. He's going through the turn and giving it a little bit of brakes as he's going through it. Watch this. See that right there? Look, a little bit of brake, a little bit of brake, a little bit of brake, right there. Do you see that? What he was doing there, that little bit of brake as he was going, that stopped the car from going too wide. If you take that turn right there and you just cut in and you don't brake at all, you're gonna go too wide. If you downshift, and you break a little on coast, you're gonna to go too slow. So the only way you can kind of combine those two and have speed and not go too slow is to stay in a good gear and just trail brake, a brake it a little bit and get it at the perfect speed to where the car's gonna go wide but it's not gonna go in the dirt. And that takes practice. Proper trail braking for every car and track combo is gonna take you time to learn. But once you master that, your lap times are definitely going to come down. All right guys, number three defensive driving and mind games. You probably didn't even think about this one, but this is huge. So mind games that you're playing with the opponent is absolutely important, okay? So your defensive driving, when someone's trying to pass you, you're holding your line, all of these things are going to make you faster because if you don't know how to hold your line, if you don't know how to defend someone, you're going to lose overall pace. And you also need to play mind games with your opponent. You need to read your opponent. Very similar to what I was talking about with breaking points. Now I'm gonna show you something called an over-under technique. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have been playing are familiar with this, but this has to do with defensive driving and mind games. You need to bait your opponent into doing things. You need to put setups out there. This kind of stuff is what's gonna make you pass. It's gonna make you faster. You need to you know, act like you're gonna do something and then you do something else. Watch this example. This is by Eric GTR3123 and Playlister is on the other side. He's also a very good driver. So watch this. You can see right here, it's on the left side. Boom, purposely breaking a little bit early and cutting into that inside like that. Did you see that? Now that right there, that move with Eric breaking and continuing to break and go a little bit slower, he closed that gap and just stole that inside line to give him a position to be on this straight and then have the inside on the following turn. You see, this is very, very important. So take a look at this from his view. Right here, boom, breaking, breaking, breaking. He sees that he's gonna have room here. So he's continuing to break to make it a little bit tighter and boom, seal that inside just like that. Now it's a straight shot. The following turn is he's gonna be on the inside and now he's got clear road. Little moves like that, these kind of mind games are, which are what's going to push you to the next level. This is very important and shouldn't be overlooked. All right, guys, number four, manual transmission and no assist. So I'm sure some of you saw this coming, but it has to be mentioned on the top five because there are some people that are still using automatic, some people that are still using assist, and because of this, your overall pace is going to be a little bit slower. Now, let me explain, okay? I have to explain this. Now, if you are just starting out, if you are playing, I do feel that using cone markers and maybe driving markers at first to get you to understand your breaking points is beneficial. But once you have that down, okay, let's say you're running cone markers, okay? So if you, if you like using cone markers right now because you don't know where to break, that's perfectly fine. You need to do that and use it until you get comfortable. So I'm gonna give you an example here really quick, okay? So look at these cone markers. Let's say that I was someone that used cone markers all the time. Well, what you need to start doing is take those cone markers off and start memorizing points on the track because the more you get used to those cones, it's, put, it's only gonna make it negative for you because what's gonna happen, you're gonna be in a race, you're gonna be a dealer race or an FI race, someone's gonna hit that cone and it's not gonna be there and you're gonna have no idea where to break because you're so used to seeing those bright orange cones on the side of the road. You can't do that. You cannot rely on these assists to make you faster. At first it's okay, so you can figure out where you need to break and work from there, but then you need to remove them. 
and don't mm. and do it yourself. You don't need to watch other people or figure out exactly, you know, the snail that they're looking at on the road or whatever. You know, just figure it out yourself. Pick a car and track combo that you're comfortable with, that you like, okay? Then you're gonna be driving. Let's say you always break at these cones. Well, now you know, hey, that's right next to the 100 meter marker. Okay, cool. I'm gonna break at 100 every single time. Try 100. Maybe you can break a little bit past 100. Maybe you can maybe you can put the bumper where the 100 is and break there. Try that out, whatever you're, com- whatever you're comfortable with, and get that embedded in your mind. So this way, when you go into the race, you can apply that and you can memorize certain parts of the track, and that's going to make you overall faster. Do this for every single track. Try to remove those assists. Now, going over manual transmissions. The reason why manual is so important is because when you're in an automatic, the car is automatically going to put the car in the the best gear to make speed. Now that sounds great. It sounds great that I'm gonna use an automatic and it's gonna make me fast all the time. But the problem is, if you are trying to be smooth and you are trying to maintain tires, as an example, if your car is just gonna downshift in first or second gear going around a turn because it's gonna make more power, it's gonna start sliding and you're gonna start burning through that rubber really, really quick after lap seven, eight, nine, you're not gonna have any tire wear. So you need to be able to control that transmission to upshift out of exit to avoid tire spin. So another thing, a lot of the automatics don't take in consideration power bands, at least from my understanding. The Supra is more of a good example, the Group the group 3 Supra, because it makes its power band kind of in the middle. Now this is where you need to check this, okay? A lot of you guys don't know this, but if you hit this little wrench right here, and you go here, you take a look at that power band. Let's put this on for a sec. Oh, you can't. Okay, so if you put this on here, you see that graph? You see the blue right there? The blue is showing you the horsepower, and you can see the drop off around 9,000 RPMs is when this thing is losing power. You need to know these kind of things. Some of the cars, they lose power after like 7,000 RPM, so you need to shift you know, no later than 7,000 RPMs to make sure you're getting the proper proper shift points. And you could use this knowledge to your advantage while you're driving, okay, I need to shift right here, or I need to shift there. And you can also pay attention to your torque curve. You have to play with it a little bit. The more control you have over your car, the faster you're going to be. All right, guys, last one, following ghosts. Now, I know a lot of you probably already know about that. You're probably like, oh, I follow ghosts all the time. But there are some people that have messaged me recently when I did my stream and they saw me following a ghost and like, dude, how do you do that? I've never seen one follow a ghost before. So this is for those people that have never done this. So you can see right here, I'm in the FIA. You got the free practice right here. You can look at the, uh, the top 10 stars. You can look at your friend rankings. Well, not only can you watch the replays from here, you can actually download them and you can watch them. You can also load the ghost. All right, so now that I'm in here, I can actually click ranking board, okay? And whether you wanna do friend rankings or you wanna do top 10 stars, whatever you wanna choose, you can just click one and you can click load ghost. Now, when you do this and you load the ghost, that their ghost lap is going to be on the track and you're gonna be able to follow it and race and get some practice and see how far you're at or what sectors you're losing time. I'm not gonna go around the track now, it's kind of self-explanatory, but for those of you guys that have never done that before, definitely utilize that tool because you need to see where you're weak. You need to see, okay, hey, I'm messing up on turn one. I'm I'm messing up on turn three. You need to see where you're having problems and then you can start refining that turn. Maybe it's a trail breaking issue. Maybe Maybe you're breaking too early. Maybe you need to change a couple things. So this is a really, really good tool. I saved this one as the last one because I think a lot of people know about this, but I just wanted to kind of mention it because I really do think that having a ghost to follow will help with overall pace. All right, guys, well, that's it. And I hope that these five tips really helped you. It's, it's really, the, those are the most important five that I could think of that's going to get you to that next level. Um, as far as my next stream, it's going to be on Friday. You should be watching this on Thursday. So one day later, I will be streaming. And I think it's going to be practiced for FIA Nations. I haven't decided which class we're going to focus on, which driver rating, it might be A+. Um, It could be B again. I'm going to make that decision. It actually might be a vote on YouTube on what we're going to focus on for the next coaching session. But I really hope that this helped you guys. Let me know if it did. Let me know if you actually have some tips yourself and you can leave in the comments. Maybe maybe there's a couple things that I missed that you guys know that's worked for you and we can kind of, you know, tell other people and people can get some more ideas. But I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys again soon. See you later, guys.